the P39 Air Cobra 172nd scale model by Hobby Boss is a relatively simple model to assemble. It is the only model I have ever worked on where the instructions are printed on the back of the box. That shows you how few parts this model has. Our intention is to build and paint three versions of this model, one German, one Soviet, and one US. I will warn you ahead of time that the Hobby Boss 172nd scale P39 Air Cobra does not have enough weight up front to allow the finished model to sit with the nose down as it does in reality. I note I couldn't add enough weight to make it correct. Although there are not many parts, the painting is fairly complicated since there are multiple colors involved on all three models so that these builds become much more interesting for our YouTube viewers. You will also note that in many of the initial videos in each chapter will have multiple components since there are many common features in all three schemes being done such as the wheel and struts, cockpit, propellers, and machine guns, as well as all of the prototypes were manufactured by Bell Aircraft in the United States. It should be noted that both the U.S. and RAF pilots who flew the P-39 did not like the aircraft because of takeoff and lake landing issues, but the Soviet pilots loved them. This is why the box art shows a P-39 in Soviet markings. Many did become aces in World War II. The parts on the sprues have very little flash, and we will start the build as soon as I take off the parts and sand the edges smooth. For the first mo model, I am featuring a P-39 Air Cobra captured intact by the Germans in 1944 and then modified paint-wise slightly with addition of yellow bands, wingtips, and a nose, and then German stenciling added. The fuel tank halves are cemented using Plastruck plastic weld liquid. I use plastic weld on components that have not been painted as it forms excellent bonds of styrene to styrene molded parts. Then the seat is cemented into the cockpit. Do all three the same way. After the fuel tanks have set for 30 to 45 minutes, you can now add the hangers onto them. Note that the hanger parts only fit one way into the fuel tank and they attach very easily. The two stabilizers can be installed into the fuselage. Again, there is a small and a large tab, so they only fit one way, so don't switch them. I use the plastic truck plastic weld on both the top and bottom to seal the stabilizers in place. An air scoop is cemented just behind the cockpit area on top of the fuselage. 
The Bell P-39 appears to have been of an unusual design. I decided to attach the additional machine guns supplied with each kit onto the underside of the wings as I didn't want to fill in the holes in those wings. The captured US P-39 had neutral gray number 33 undersides so that that is why I'm being sprayed here on two of the models along with the small parts that will be attached to the underside later in the build. Note, I am spraying TCP 1245 neutral gray number 33 at 28 to 30 PSI using a Vega 2000 airbrush fitted with a 0.3 millimeter or medium tip. There are two aircraft shown here as the US P-39 early in the war had two-tone camouflage scheme as RAF aircraft and neutral gray underneath. And it wasn't until 1944 that the upper surface color was just US Army Air Force olive drab. Gloss White TCP-005 is being sprayed on all of the struts for all of the P-39 models, as that is the same on all versions supplied to the Allies. I am using the same technique as previously on each side of the parts needed. Turn and tilt the parts to ensure 100% coverage. TCP-1250 interior green is sprayed onto all three cockpit assemblies using the same procedure as the previous video. Matte black TCP-433 is sprayed on each side of the wheels for all three P-39s being built. Gloss Black TCP-010 is now sprayed on both sides of all three propellers for the aircraft. Note that most U.S. World War II fighter aircraft had black propellers. I believe metallic burnt iron TCP-396 will be an appropriate color to spray on the exhaust pipes on all three P-39 models. Spray both sides in the same technique as all the other applications of our sprayable colors in every product line we produce. If you have any questions about techniques explored in this video, or general questions about this build, please post your questions in the comments section below.